Wev Gerber expressed a belief that the station would become self-supporting in fairly short order and indicated a desire to make the new New York station the flagship of a network of label radio stations throughout the United States. At the time of the station's purchase, Gerber declared, the purchase of a label station will guarantee to minority opinion in America its right to be heard without censorship. Station manager August Gerber dedicated much of his time to keeping the station's meager revenue stream flowing, although already by January 1928 Norman Thomas was opining that the Socialist Party and its radio station can't go on living like this. Regulatory difficulties on top of the Socialist Party's financial troubles came regulatory problems with the FRC, which on 25 May 1928 demanded that WEFT and 163 other stations show cause why their broadcasting licenses should not be revoked as part of a plan to rationalize the distribution of radio bandwidth by forcing out small stations catering to niche audiences in favor of fewer high-powered stations broadcasting commercially to a mass market. In an era in which few stations did likewise, WEV did not fail to produce programming dealing with African-American history and culture, including the broadcast of a weekly Pullman Porter's Hour sponsored by the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters which included both entertainment and talks on serious topics of interest to the black community of New York City. WEV's educational director, Paul Blanchard, expanded the station's educational content following its August 1928 license renewal including weekly courses on economics conducted by A.J. Must of Brookwood Labor College. While the move had been sought by the Debs Memorial Radio Fund, which remained the legal entity owning the station, the change ultimately solved little, WEFT remained underpowered and forced to share its frequency with three other stations. The FRC continued to seek a reduction in the number of stations to more closely match the limited number of broadcast frequencies and saw weak and underfinanced stations such as WEFT as fodder for the executioner's acts. Preparations immediately began for the transfer of the station's operations from the sixth floor of the Ilgu building in Manhattan to a new home located on Long Island, and the station's management was shuffled. From the time of the 1932 broadcasting agreement through the 1970s the socialist and Yiddish language WEFT continued to share its station frequency with the religious group, transmitting 86 hours per week while leaving Sundays and early mornings until 8 a.m. to WBBR, and Monday nights to Huaz. Huaz was sold to the owners of POW in 1967 and turned into a non-interfering, daytime-only station, with POW taking the old Huaz Monday night hours. In 1981, the Forward Association sold Wevdom to Salem Media, which changed the station's format and call letters, making it the Christian station WNYM. Salem subsequently purchased POW, merging that station into WNYM and eliminating the 52-year timeshare on 1330 as of 31 December, 1984, F24IB78BA49.